I'm really nervous about handling this passage of Scripture. What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, endured with much long suffering? Come on, Holy Ghost, I really need you to help me right now. Somebody's got to see this. I, I need you to help me right now. With much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted are made for destruction. And that he might make known the riches of his glory in the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So, we've already established by the Bible how we all got here. Amen? Amen. We've already established that we are here because God made us. Your mom and daddy were the vehicle by which you came into this world, but you are here because God made you. Amen. You're here because God allowed you to be born. You're here because God allowed you to be created. Now, according to the scriptures that I just read, back up one a couple if you don't mind, Brother Shannon. One more. What if God, willing to show His wrath, created some vessels, that's us, created some vessels of wrath that were made for destruction? Okay? That there were some people, oh God, I hope you help me right now that I do this, that there are some people created that never going to have hope. Vessels of wrath created for destruction. Fitted to destruction. That means a vessel that was in the hands of the potter. Because if you read on in verse number 18, and I didn't get into it a whole lot, but if you read on into verse number 18, he says, I've got the power to raise a nation up or to tear one down. You're in my hands. What he was saying is, is, is don't get so big for your britches that you think I'm not in control of you. Okay? Because I got a way to bring you around to my way of thinking. Okay? But now in Romans chapter number 9, Paul is talking about that we're all created by God. But what if God created some vessels of wrath made just for destruction? Next verse. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had before afore prepared unto glory. So we've got vessels of wrath created for destruction and vessels of mercy created for Glory. Now think about it just for a minute. I've even said this before. Lord, are there some people that we just ain't going to be able to help? <laughs> I heard yesterday in a different context and setting that, that people don't change. Well, I disagree with that. I strongly disagree with that. But I want you to think. Jeremiah, go to the potter's house. And watch him work. And then I want you to hear my words. Cannot I do with you as the potter with this clay? So what if God... Now think about it for a minute. We know... And I'm saying this tongue in cheek. We know that there's some good prospects for salvation. Come on now. And we know that there's some folks 
that it'll take a miracle from God before they ever get changed. Huh? Oh, God have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Verse 24. Even us, whom He hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now see, the Jews just thought that by virtue of being Jews, they are automatically saved. And what He's letting them know so what if God makes some vessels of wrath unto destruction and vessels of mercy unto His glory even amongst the Jews and among the Gentiles? Next verse. As He saith also in O.C. That's Hosea in New Testament vernacular. I want you to get this. I will call them my people which were not my people. <laughs> I don't think you got it. He said, I create some vessels of wrath unto destruction. Without the mercy of God. Come on, what did he, what did he tell Adam and Eve? If you eat of the tree... You're going to die. Destruction was assured, Brother David. It was given to him. Without mercy. And as he saith also unto them in Hosea, the book of Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. And her beloved, which was not beloved. Next verse. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Amen. There. In the place where it is said, Ye are not my people. What does it mean to not be the people of God? It's hopeless. And we were, the book of Ephesians, I believe it's chapter number 4, says we are strangers to the covenant of promise and without hope. God have mercy. It was said unto them, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. This is the reason for the trip to the potter's house. To see the marred vessel become a new vessel. To realize and recognize that the only place that a messed up, jacked up mind that is way out there in left field somewhere that cannot comprehend peace, that cannot comprehend hope, that cannot comprehend safety, that cannot comprehend a change, the only place that it can be had done, the only place a marred vessel can be remade is in the hand of the potter. What was once not a people, what was once not beloved, by submitting to the authority of the potter, shall now, everybody say now, in that place, be called the children of the living God. How do you get to be a child? You get to be born into that family. How do you get to be in the body of Christ? You are born again. Oh God have mercy. I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. But when I was born again, I was born again to hope. A lively hope. A hope as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Now if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes. Once a vessel made for destruction. Once a vessel that was going down a path to the potter's field. Once a vessel that was considered no good for nothing through the long-suffering hand of the potter. 
the potter who chose the vessel. Think about it. That's what he called. Listen to me. That, I didn't even have it in my notes. That's what he called Paul. Said he is a vessel chosen by me. You know what that was in response to, Brother Pete? Come on now. You think about it for a minute. Who would have ever called Paul a chosen vessel of God? He was a murderer. He threw Christians in jail. They were scared of him, Brother Billy. But the Lord told Ananias, He's coming to your house and don't be afraid because He's a chosen vessel. What in the eyes of the world? Come on now. You and I both know it. We know how the world thinks. We sometimes like to, like to think that it's all pie in the sky. You know, everybody's playing Barbies and Tonka trucks together and we all live in this happy little world. But you know there are places you and I don't go. There's people that you and I don't want to run with. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come on you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the... If I read uttermost right, Brother Rice, that's as far away as you can get. One preacher said, instead of uttermost, it's the guttermost. Go down. Because our responsibility, and Brother Cornwell taught us this at General Conference, and, and I know this is getting, getting put on the internet, and I hope he sees it and knows that I listened. We have got to stop. Sister Stacy and I talked about it the other day. We have got to stop being so results-oriented. Because if no, none of y'all change today, it ain't my fault. Come on, I'm, I, I walked out of here and I've said to my wife, baby, I preached my guts out today. I sweated to, to I got to peel my clothes off when I get home. I've sweated through my coat. I've sweated through my t-shirt. I've pre preached my guts out. Didn't nobody do. Nobody in the... <laughs> But it's all about submitting to the potter and recognizing the fact that I'm in his hands. Oh, and the devil, the devil wants to pound that message of hopeless. The devil wants to pound that message of you're no good. The devil wants to pound that message. See, you're messed up. You got all this junk in you and you're not beautiful and you're not pretty and he's such a stinking liar. Because I'm not in his hands. He didn't make me. And he has no part, nor lot, nor memorial. I was made in the image of God Almighty. I was created according to his pleasure and for his good, uh, good desires and good mission and good message for the kingdom of God. But all I got to do, Brother Rice, is I got to recognize the influence of the potter. That's why Jeremiah had to see the potter work. I thought about it this morning. You know, uh, I, I thought about uh, how beautiful a thing Sister Connie put on Facebook. And she come up and told me the other day. And I'm a little bit ashamed I didn't remember. But she said, it's been one year since I got the Holy Ghost. And I thought this morning as I walked through Sister Connie and, and Brother Mark and Brother Greg and, and the different ones, Brother Ray and Sister Betty, that, I, that I've seen the Holy Ghost work. That's the work of the potter. Come on, that's the witness of the potter. You listen to me right now. It ain't like, Courtney and Corey, it ain't like we're just blowing a bunch of smoke out there. It ain't like that somebody says Chevy's the best or Ford's the best or Dodge is the best. We've got the work of the potter among us. Brother Billy, I see the work of the potter. It ain't nothing I've done. It ain't nothing to solve. God have mercy. But it's the work of the potter's hands. Hallelujah. Oh, God have mercy. That's why every time I talk to Griff, 
And Griff's a little down. Or I talk to Corey and Corey's a little down. You know what I say, Brother Pete? Come on, man. Don't be discouraged. Why? Because sometimes, Brother David, it's a little pressure from the... It's a little pressure from the potter that's just making me into what he wants me to be. And the devil will try to take that and make something else out of it. But it's our Holy Ghost filled people who've heard the... <laughs> who have felt the touch of the potter's hand and heard the voice of the potter. There's not a doubt in my mind. It ain't good decisions. Brother Billy, I've wrote the book on bad decisions. It ain't intelligence because I've wrote the book on lack of intelligence. It ain't being in good shape or hanging around with the right people. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So, well, they ain't doing this, and they ain't doing that, and they ain't doing this. You know what? They're in the hands of the potter. And it ain't a vessel that pleases me we're trying to make. Sister Connie, but it's a vessel that pleases God. Because he's the potter, and I'm the clay. Huh? And again, I, I, Brother Greg's mentioned it many times. Courtney mentioned it to me the other night. Actually, I think it was Angie that mentioned it the other night. How come everybody can't see it? How come everybody can't understand it? How come everybody, it's, it's just plain. It's called Brother David, they can't relate to the work of the potter. And sometimes it's just words. Do you realize how much do you realize how much of the religious world, Brother Billy, is just God can do this and God can do this? Well, let me see something where he's doing it at. They said, Man and brethren.